building. Okay. Terry Ann Nelson from Operation Verve, a workplace process architect, speaking with Prosper today on the online prosperity show. Uh, today, we're looking at exactly how to raise up your leaders in your business by building out processes that will release you into the freedom that you wanted to experience right back when you started your business and uh, turn that uh, that horrible quicksand of a business uh, into something that you can really flow in and, uh, and enjoy freedom from. Uh, looking forward to catching you in there. Now, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Tauruvinga. And today, I have a special guest joining us, Kerry Ann Wilson. Kerry, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you, Prosper. Thank you so much for having me. I just uh, love sharing some time with you here today. I'm very Fan well. Fantastic. I was just looking at my mobile phone as I showed you earlier on that we last spoke in 2019, but so much has happened. And for the viewer who's watching right now, I've just anointed Carrie as the smooth operator. She's the founder <laughs> of Operation Verve and a powerhouse in the business management, education, and team leadership space. She has over two decades of experience growing businesses across service and retail industries, online and offline. And Carrie Ann is passionate about creating employee-centered learning experiences that actually boost performance, confidence, and engagement. Now, her story, as she's going to be letting us know uh, moving forward in just 18 months, Kerry Ann achieved the most um, incredible feat. She rebuilt Australia's largest vacuum parts website after her late husband passed away. And um, obviously, we're going to be hearing much about that story. And But what she did was restructure that business, recovered debt, automated the systems, outsourced operations, and sold it at a profit. See, good things uh, come to those that can wait five uh, to seven business days like what? Terry did, but I'm not going to take this away from her. She now has a workplace processes, um, you know, tool, and she's the architect of that, where she leverages um, Lean Six Sigma to actually help clients maximize their team's potential. Now, there's going to be a lot that we're going to unpack with this episode, and I'm not going to taint it with my dirty feet or my uninformed, um, you know, intelligence around Terry's expertise. Just Get ready to gain valuable insights from Carrie Ann as she shares her expertise in business management, employee training, and adapting um, a remote work environment. Now, Carrie, I've already welcomed you to the show. You let us know a little bit about yourself and exactly what has been happening in your world. My God, that introduction, I, I feel very, very special right now. I hope I can live up to that. That was really quite remarkable. Um, yes, so uh, these last few years have been crazy for all of us, right? So like I said, we met in 2019, uh, which I actually think was uh, one of the last, in fact, the last uh, speaking event that I presented at um, before the dreaded COVID. And uh, I live here in Melbourne in Australia. And so we had some pretty brutal lockdowns uh, over those couple of years of the pandemic. Um, and it really, like, like everyone, it forced me into a situation where I really had to think, okay, what is my business about? How can I pivot, which has just become such a dirty word, hasn't it? Um, how can I how can I shift? You know, how can I leverage all of those cliches? Um, but what am I going to do to turn this into an opportunity? Um, because I really do believe with all my heart, I'm quite a positive person, just naturally. And uh, and I thought, okay, there's got to be an opportunity here. Um, so what is it? What is it? <laughs> and um, and the good news is, um, uh, prior to COVID, I was working with businesses on site and uh, had sort of a hybrid mix of um, of working uh, online, you know, remotely and then also on site. And, I, and of course, I, I wasn't able to do that pretty much for a couple of years. So I thought, right, where's the market going? Where is the workforce going? Well, they're all going home. So let's just really hone and focus my services right there on, on building out processes that are specifically de dedicated to remote it's the best thing I ever did. Uh, I just, I love working in this space. It's allowed me to build a lot more global connections. Uh, it's allowed me to really uh, embrace a lifestyle that I, I love working from home myself. And uh, and other people can do that too. So that's probably the, the really big shift that happened over those couple of years um, in uh, during COVID. And then out of that, 
has come a bunch of uh, courses and resources, tools that I've developed to help people do just that, work successfully with their remote team from home and build a thriving business while they're building a lifestyle that they really love and enjoy and can have that, that you know, classic work-life balance that everyone's looking for, but so few people achieve. Fantastic. And good on you for always uh, landing on your feet, no matter what happens, um, you know, in, in, in everything else. Now, you actually brought across something that's of paramount importance to, um, you know, a lot of people, which basically is streamlining remote work. You see, a lot of companies have been allowing people to work from home, but I don't think they've actually managed to let go and allow their employees to actually, um, you know, work there. What is it that you, um, you know, you you actually do with companies and what, what, what do you help them achieve in order to streamline that yeah. process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the idea of working from home is fabulous, but it's not as simple as simply doing what you did in the office at, from home. It doesn't work like that. We're missing the water cooler moments. We're missing the face-to-face -face collaborations. You know, there's there's no longer the whiteboard with the with the brainstorming happening. It's no longer we've got um you know, people in a in a big meeting working face to face. Remote and, and recreate those experiences because humans still need connection. Businesses still need people to collaborate. And workers still need to feel valued and feel rewarded and feel connected in their workplace. So it's a matter of saying, okay, what are the things we need? We need all the collaboration, productivity, uh, accountability, visibility. We need those things. So how can we set up processes and routines and tools that allow us to still achieve those outcomes, but when we're all working in different parts of the country, if not the world? Um, and so that means tapping into uh, tools like we're using now, uh, you know, working a, a lot more in video conferencing, using Zoom or Slack or whatever the tool is that you're using, really getting those team chats happening and re and it's like recreating the uh the tea room you know recreating that traditional tea room by having um great slack meetings or great um uh, microsoft uh teams meetings you know joining there in video having social events online literally you know pulling up your wine on a friday afternoon and having your five o'clock uh, happy hour with your team you know um having those check-ins and then tapping into tools also uh, that are specifically dedicated to managing um, uh, projects and tasks, tools like monday.com, which is my absolute favourite platform for managing uh, workflow. Um, but then also ClickUp is, is a really valuable, uh, very robust tool. Um, and so keeping projects moving that way. Uh, there's so much we can do. Uh, so I remember thinking when we were going through COVID, I remember thinking, surely this has got to be the best time in history to have a pandemic. Um, we had we had all the tools we needed uh, to go ahead and you know can you imagine a hundred years prior we had the um, the Spanish flu I think it was like influenza all over the world terrible pandemic um, but no connection no connection at all people would have to be literally quarantined and not able to work and I mean we live in an amazing time in history and technology has such given us such gifts that we can yeah we really are able to maximize and leverage and. Yeah, and do that thing, create productivity, create amazing businesses right from the comfort of your own home. Fantastic. I was just thinking while you're talking about that whole technology, just this moment right now, you are in your home, I'm in my home, you know, through the power of a, a Zoom and a microphone and a camera, yeah. we are actually creating yeah. value and content for, you know, um, you know, both our audiences. And that wouldn't have been possible, say, like you said, in the time where um, even when Oprah was starting, you know, she had to have a studio, a studio audience. We are going to include a laugh track at the back there, Carrie, just to have that <laughs> <laughs> you know so there's there's something that happens in this world that we now live in there's a gazillion amount of websites out there that are just helping people get more sales nail their branding create their yeah. content optimize their website but none exists that actually provide people with that daily management of resources that people actually need to turn that sort of knowledge or skill set of using these tools in order to actually be efficient. Can you just let us, um, you know, walk us through what Operation Verve does, um, you know, to yeah. alleviate this problem for the business person and, and, you know, how 
you as a smooth operator make make it super easy for people to um you know connect with with either their clients or their teams remotely yeah exactly exactly thank you for asking that's a very generous question i appreciate that um so when when i'm working with my clients They've, they've already built a business that they've got a, a way of attracting sales. They know how to build bigger, better, more. You know, they know how to get a good stream of clients. They all uh, really maximize their sales. They've got that down. But the, the thing in our in our culture, if I could speak a bit sort of uh, existentially for a second, um, the, the thing about our Western culture is that we're always about that bigger, better, more. We're always about chasing more money, more clients, more growth, bigger, better, faster, greater. And and I'm like that too. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm quite an ambitious person. But at the end of the day, if you're only chasing to go as fast as you can and make as much money as you can, what's going to happen in behind that? You're leaving the team, your team that you're relying on to really sustain some um, good um, lasting growth you're burning them. They are they are drowning in the wake of that rush that is, is uh, happening to the front, you know, the first place. Um, and so it really is a case of, um, you know, another cliche, but slowing down to speed up. Pausing, not pausing your sales, uh, not pausing that business activity, but taking time to check back and say, okay, what is the machine that's running? What is the engine that's running this entire machine? What is the the, uh, those essential critical processes that we need to make sure we can sustain taking on more business, that we can sustain this marketing program, that sales strategy, uh, that onboarding, you know, building out the team. If you are only ever chasing sales and chasing transactions, you won't build a business that can actually grow bigger than you and you will burn people out along the way. Um, best thing you can do is empower your team. And that's the sort of work that I'm doing with my clients. I'm asking them, okay, what are you doing now to, um, to conduct your everyday business? What are those back-end processes? And how can we capture those processes, streamline them, make sure that they're operating as efficiently as, as possible? Um, but then how can we capture that really efficient process in such a way that someone else can do it? So it's not the business owner or it's not just that that key, you know, uh, often it's the two I see might be the office manager, the uh, the team leader, uh, your personal assistant, whoever it is that two I see is holding the, the whole business together because there's no processes happening to actually allow the team to really grow and work and thrive um, because there's this bottleneck at the very top. Uh, and so, yeah, empowering your team by capturing processes, then putting it in workflows um, that other people have got, clear work instructions. This is how we do our marketing. On a Tuesday, we go ahead and we post in this and this and this platform and we get that content from this and this and this source and we follow this routine. And then on Fridays, we'll do our tracking of, you know, what, how exactly does the team need to run so that you as the business owner are not tied to every single part of the business work so your business can grow without you being tied to all of the work of that growth. Fantastic. And so that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really, really amazing. And I, I, I like how you touched upon, um, you know, the, the, the Western culture and that whole individualistic, mm. um, bigger this, bigger upsize me, uh, grand, you know, sort of appeal, which basically leaves um, emptiness at the at the bottom there. And you know, while you were talking, I was just you know sort of referencing to how we have uh, in the African culture Ubuntu, where it predominantly means I am because um, you know you are. You know, we can't, I can't strive to be any better if I'm leaving my fellow um, humans behind. So you know, you are as strong I as hate. your as the weakest link, you know what I mean? If, 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 if a tribe has gone out fishing or a tribe has gone out uh, hunting, um, if the weakest one is eaten by a lion, that affects the whole tribe. So, you know what I mean? You want to make sure everybody else is going along with that. And, you know, based on that sort of concept of you having noticed that this is what is actually happening, could you maybe provide us with an example of maybe a client project where you actually helped these business leaders bring out the best in, in their team? And then sort of what challenges did you encounter trying to instill that, you know, method in oh. And, um, you know, things like that. And what, what sort of, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've got the exact little case story for you, uh, a little example. Um, it's a project that we're working on at the moment, actually, with one of my clients. Uh, they're an outsourcing company and um, um, they're largely, um, they're, their team is largely made up of Filipinos um, and I love working with Filipino people. It's just, oh, they're just generally exquisite human beings. Um, anyway, um, the problem that they came to me with was that they didn't have set systems for their client service team to be able to effectively meet the needs of their clients. Um, they needed their client service team to be checking in regularly with their clients, asking how their VA was performing for them, asking what their business needs are, asking if they've got any problems, but they had no way of tracking that. They had no schedule of when the calls were meant to happen. They had no schedule of what was meant to happen in those calls. And then they had no record of of um uh, of a uh, schedule um to follow um that was automated so they had no reminders um and uh, when i i worked uh, talked directly with the client service team um of course um actually a little side note there that's actually um one of the key things that i do i don't i, I don't really work with the business owner that much <laughs> i find out what the business owner needs but then I'm working with the people actually doing the work because they're the ones that know the processes. They're the ones that are the man on the ground, you know, so to speak. So working directly with this client service team and saying, all right, how do you know who to call today? How do you know which client needs a call? And they blank, like nothing. <laughs> they didn't know. And so that basically what they've been doing is randomly checking in on clients when they remember or troubleshooting when a client is having a problem. And then by then it's too late, you know, the fire's already burning um and then there that creates a lot of stress for them um and then you know updating their hubspot with their with their notes whenever <laughs> this activity was taking place um and so what we're working through now is creating a um uh week by week account for the first uh first two months of onboarding a brand new client it's this is call number one this is what we do in call number one these are the resources we need for call number one uh, and now we're going to put call number one in your ClickUp. We're going to create a recurring task that is that's there for every single client is going to get that call number one. Uh, and then call number two is the next week. What's the agenda for that call? What are the questions you're asking? What are the files you're providing? Where are you putting the notes, et cetera? And we're, we're building out a template of all of those client check-in calls for those first couple of months. And then the calls will spread out to be less frequent because of course, then the client's up and running, but they still need to be checking in once a month. And see, once you get little processes like this, they're in a template, they're set up in ClickUp, and then every client runs through that template. All of the resources are right there and you click up all your Monday or heaven forbid if you're using Trello. I'm not a fan of Trello, but you could be using Trello for this. It kind of doesn't matter what tool you're using. But when you start to get those step-by-step -step processes, then things like client fires are less likely to burn. You've got client service team members that are empowered. They're not going to come to you asking, oh, can we do this for this client or they've got a problem and I don't know what to do because they're preventing most of the problems before they even occur. Uh, and then, of course, inevitably some problems will occur because humans don't always agree and things don't always go smoothly. And that's okay too. Because then once you've got those routine things, this per, the client success team in this example are not burning out. They're not burning the candle at both ends. So when problems do come up, then we're getting to the deeper work of starting to create responses around, well, this client wanted this thing. Other clients would probably want that thing too. Let's draft up an email that we template. Uh, and so then we can use that as a standard or we can have a little set of like FAQs in the client service manual that we build out. So it's about capturing those step-by-step -step processes, making sure that they're in a templated thing that can then run on autopilot so everyone knows what to do. Uh, and then we go ahead and then go deeper into troubleshooting and have specific, I don't like using the word policy, it's very corporate, but certainly guidelines or, or FAQs to keep people on track when things do go awry. What are the sort of responses that we do uh, that we use and apply? So, yeah, it, it's amazing. And now clients are getting onboarded properly. They're actually having their proper welcome call. They're actually on track for those first two months. So, so new clients are having an amazing experience and getting all of the information that they need to feel confident and uh, secure in in the business they're doing with that business. So, 
makes an amazing difference. Absolutely incredible. And the client service team, they're actually like, oh, thank you. Like, now I can breathe. <laughs> And so, yeah, it's amazing work. The transformation that happens by taking this approach. Now this business can take on another 50 clients. They can truly scale because they've got a process for doing it. Fantastic. So, yeah, who said processes don't make money? They absolutely do. <laughs> Fantastic. And, 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 and thank you for walking us through that uh, sort of case study because while you were talking, it's it just dawned on me that, everything matters. The packaging matters, the phone call matters, the actual connection with the client matters, especially in the first part of communicating with them, the onboarding process. And if that is done well, that sets the tone for how that client is going to receive and uh, refer that business uh, moving forward. Because you know, clients, you usually don't notice these things, but the experience that they now receive is what keeps them wanting to come back for more. So it's not just necessarily, you know, being, um, you know, looking at processes or whatever it is. It's just the outcomes that the customers actually then have in the end are what um, matters. And I like the statement that you said in the end that processes are actually an investment because you can literally use Take that to the bank, so to speak, and hire more customers and utilize that. But you did you did mention a word that is now, you know, like a you know, a buzzword in in in, in the business uh sectors. And you mentioned burnout, you know what I mean? Everybody mm -hmm. thinks it's a badge of honor, but from what you're saying, it does look like it's a lack of processes. Could you just elaborate a little bit on 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 your take on that? Yeah, 100 percent Um studies show that business owners are actually uh that their sleep now I, I'm a complete nana. Like I love sleeping, right? <laughs> Um, and so uh, I'm I'm really protective of my sleep and my self-care time. And one of the reasons for that is because studies show that 85% of business owners um, experience disrupted sleep that is directly due to stress. Um, business owners are experiencing higher levels of burnout and um, and anxiety. Uh, and it, and I, I believe with all my heart uh, from my own experiences and then, you know, working with the clients that I do, just seeing the landscape, especially in that sort of, you know, small to medium um, sized uh, businesses, business owners, are they try and hold everything together by doing what they did when they were running a small little business just with one or two people. Well, now they've got 10 or 15 people, they're still connected to every single thing that's happening with every single client. They're still connected to every single part of the sales process, every single part of the marketing, every single part of the finance. I've got to check over on everything and sign off on every expense. You can't be that person when you're running a team of 15. You can't be that person if you're wanting to take your business from 1 million to 5 million. You absolutely can't. It will not work. And then what happens, of course, is that business owners are burning out. They're having those breakdowns. They're not sleeping as well. And it does come the the I don't I don't think it's a magic wand, but but you know, I'm very I'm very realistic. You know, I'm reluctant just to say just pull out a process and it's all going to be better. But if you, <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, but certainly, if you shift your mindset and say, okay, what am I building? If I want to build a business that's bigger than myself, then I need to be able to let go. How do I let go? By creating processes that other people can pick up what you're letting go of. And then we've got some um, realistic ability there for them to have that work-life balance, for them to actually take their weekends back, go on a holiday, enjoy their self-care time in the mornings, you know, pick up their kids from school, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things that I, I don't like that business owners wear that stress like a badge of honour. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, and, yeah, you know, I know when my husband passed away um, in 2014, I, that was it cut through to me and I, I just thought that's it like business owners don't have to live like this they don't have to do this at all um and and employees want that security of having a workplace that they love to come to and get acknowledgement and reward and and it does all come down to shifting the way you're leading that business and instead of just doing jobs and being attached to transactions actually building systems that let go of all of those things for you 
Fanta- fantastic. Well, from what you were saying, and also my my deepest condolences about you know your husband there, um, but it did really elevate you into the person that you've now become because that story in and of itself was what really connected me to you as you told me the other day but while you were talking earlier on you know you know I I just remembered a statement that says you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full so many of these people are not letting go of of you know these processes or these things that of who they were when they started their business and like you said you know you just gotta wave that magic process oh sorry wand um (laughs) to in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable now Oh, if Operation Verve is that magic wand for um for people, what what would be the best way that people can um, maybe get started in knowing how you can work with them? Because this this is you know a lot of work that needs to be uh, done, and maybe there's a few steps. What would be the rightful way for people to just maybe uh, dip their feet and um, yeah, get 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 in. Yeah. Start magic. waving that magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you can always email me, info at operationverve.com. That's fine. But if you don't know much about what we do, you're probably best to visit our website first, um, operationverve.com, uh, nice and simple. And actually this year I've, I've uh, been having a bit of fun. We've um, we've done a revamp of the website. So we've actually got right there on the homepage a Get Started button, uh, which will take you through to three different options so if you're just getting started and you're looking to um, to hire your first person or maybe you've only got one or two but you're in that early stages, um, we've got programs dedicated for you. If you've got a team of sort of 5 to 10 to 12, we've got programs and resources dedicated there. And if you're looking to really truly scale, um, that's where I really love playing. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we can help you in that space too. But check out the website because it will give you and the, the um, articles that we've got up there are full of information about how to actually bring this to life. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's that's your best next step. And there's freebies all over the website too. So you can go ahead and download a bunch of stuff and, and yeah, start to learn what we're about and get some handy tips along the way as well. Absolutely. I mean, like you've just really elaborated, having a process, having a way, it's not necessarily just for maybe your clients or your team, for your own mental stability you know that everything is looked after every every dot is is uh, every every t is crossed and every dot is dotted and um i really yeah. appreciate that but there's one thing that i'm not going to let you go with that sort of um okay. elaborating on us you see in my household work life balance is determined by that hook there all right. So as soon as that hook is open, it's free free for all. And as soon as that hook is there, that means I'm working. So can you sort of um, help other people define that for their business and, you know, how that actually then uh, spreads across uh, them in order for them to prevent that burnout you were talking about? Yeah, really great. Um, this is more about leadership than it is about process management, isn't it? It's about being a leader in your business and a leader in your life. Um, I'm I'm so similar. When that door's closed, I'm working. As soon as I open that door and I'm on the other side of it, that door is closed. I'm not doing anything else to do with work. Um, uh, so certainly some practical tips. If you've got 30 hours to work, you're going to do uh, just as much as you would if you're doing 40 hours of work. That is the absolute truth. Like you get to a point, your brain physically cannot, or neurologically, uh, cannot process any more work. So pulling back and saying, okay, you know what? Instead of doing a 10-hour day, I'm going to restrict to eight and I'm going to start on time, I'm going to finish on time. And being that disciplined and that strict on yourself because the, your health, your well-being, your life depends on it. Um, so, and I know for me, like I, I've got a little me first policy. Uh, so, and what that is, is, um, is that the first few hours of my day, they're mine. They're mine. I'm not doing work. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to prep some really great healthy food. Um, I'm going to take care of my washing and look out of my balcony. You know, they're mine. It's me first, always me first. Um, And so my mornings are my my best time uh, of the day. I love my mornings. Um, And then I do, I work very hard through the day. I love my work. Uh, but I do work hard. I'm super ambitious, love building my own business and love helping other people build theirs. 
So being really organized, things like working out of your calendar, making sure you're managing yourself the way you want your team to be managed, um, as in have checklists for yourself, have tasks for yourself in your own Monday board or your own ClickUp board or your own Trello so that you've got an agenda. Make sure you're doing the most important things first, that you've got those deal breakers. Today, I must finish that template because if you get that done, then they, your team, can go ahead and do it. Anyway, I'm getting distracted by process stuff now. So making sure you're really organized in the day and then, <laughs> and then finish on time. Close the door. Don't check your emails anymore. And on the weekend, book up some fun stuff and book a holiday. Um, we have um, freedom getaways that will go ahead and we'll do those a few times a year. And, and if you book a holiday, I tell you what, it's very motivating. I know I've got a holiday coming up in two months. I've got a project to finish. That project's going to be finished <laughs> because I want to go away and have an actual break where I'm not thinking, oh, I could have done that project. Oh. So, yeah, having very clear boundaries in place and being strict with yourself, you know, it brings a whole bunch of joy and motivation uh, back into your life. Fantastic. Now, Kerry, we've had all about your past and how you you obviously changed that uh, business, the Viking business. We've heard about what you're doing right now and it's really super exciting. And you've just hinted on a little bit of your future, which is in the immediate future where you're going away on holiday. Very jealous about that. What, what can people expect from the smooth operator moving forward? Uh, that's really cool. Thank you for asking me that as well. Another very generous question, Prosper. Um, I've been... Um, I, I lift the sticky notes. If I've got an idea, I'll just stick it on a sticky so I don't I don't lose those, you know, I capture those ideas right there in the moment. So I don't always need to be near my computer, which is very important. Um, uh, so we're looking at building out um, uh, managers. We've started building out managers training. Um, and so I think my sexy title is going to be something like the magic manager. Still working out the sexy title. <laughs> um, but certainly uh, it's around turning your business managers into leaders. If you've got a team of five or 10, there are going to be three or four people in that team that you absolutely need them to really rise up and take the leadership reins in your business so that you can let go. And if you've got some leaders, not just people that are doing tasks, it, like oftentimes when businesses, uh, business owners are building out their team, they're treating their team like, well, you're another pair of hands for me. You're another pair of hands for me. But it's so much better when you can raise up your team as leaders that they literally lead projects. They literally build out the email templates or the task templates for you. Then you can really let go. And they're the sort of manage, magic managers that you're looking for, you know, that that actually take on that leadership mantle in your business. So, yeah, we're, we're just pulling that together. Um, so, yeah, super excited about that. Oh, and my um, one of my VAs, her name is Sugar, she has uh, just finished the first draft of her book. She wrote it all herself, Filipino VA, writing this amazing uh, book in English, and it's quite sassy too. She's She's got a really good uh, sense of humour, and that is called Your VA Handbook, and uh, and that is we're doing pre-sales now. Uh, that'll be uh, headed off to the publisher by, by the end of tomorrow, and, uh, yeah, so we're, we're fingers crossed we're going to go for a July 1 launch. Um, but yeah, certainly um, your VA handbook is uh, is great for business owners who want to leverage their, the investment they're making into their virtual assistants. Fantastic. Well, and congratulations to the sweet sugar who has uh, written her book, your VA handbook. If you can give us links when they're ready, so we can also put them uh, at the bottom of this. Now, Carrie, <laughs> I can't thank you enough for the time that you spent with me today um, on uh, the show. And I actually think we should maybe look into making a few episodes based on, you know, the, the, the type of work that you're doing and really getting granular on some of the things that you're doing. I'd love to do that. I, I love passing on tips and strategies to help people for sure. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Fantastic. And there you have it. That's about wraps it up for our insightful conversation with Kerry and Nelson. And you've heard her. It's on record. She's going to come back with a few episodes. So don't you miss those. And if you have noticed, um, Kerry is this remarkable 
founder and operation at Operation Verve, a true master of workplace uh, processes and a team leadership. I hope you've gained valuable insights into her entrepreneurial journey, her passion, and also what she's getting up to these days. We hope you found this uh, episode enlightening and you've gained practical wisdom and I hope you can apply this in your own ventures. And if you'd like to learn more about Kerry and uh, Nelson, I will put in the comments and the um, you know notes section what it is that she does. Until next time, keep striving for success in the online world. Thank you once again, Carrie. Thank you so much, Prosper. Have a fabulous day. Fantastic.